Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and what you're looking at right here is, according to some scientists, possibly a black hole that's responsible for the effects we're observing out there in the solar system. And they're suggesting that this right here is essentially Planet 9. Let's talk about this and welcome to Odeme. And so the authors of the paper, Is Planet 9 a Black Hole, suggest that this object right here, specifically of this size, could represent all of the effects we're observing out there, including the changes in orbit, but also including something else we've never really considered. But let's not rush into things and actually discuss what exactly is being proposed. So first of all, let's begin with Planet 9 itself. Why do we think it's here? Well, I've made a video previously where I've actually gone through at least five different reasons for why we believe this here is possibly a real thing. One of the first proofs or one of the first suggestions was that um, some of the objects in our outer solar system have this unusual, very peculiar orbit, all of them pointing um, in a very similar direction as if something disrupted them. This is actually one of the first proofs we've discovered, and since then we've found a few more. You can check out the video I made previously where I describe all of them. And so something is out there, and something is basically causing things in the outer solar system to change their parameters, their orbital parameters. But even though we've looked around for quite a long time now, we still haven't really found anything. The current assumption is that it's probably going to take us about 10 to maybe 12 years to maybe find something. But so far, nothing. And uh, that's because of the amount of night skies we actually have to very thoroughly scan to try to discover if this planet actually does exist. But this paper that just came out, although might sound a little bit controversial, I mean, how can you possibly suggest that there's a black hole out there, does present a few really interesting ideas. Now, first of all, what exactly are they suggesting? And what exactly is a primordial black hole? Uh, the object uh, that we refer to as a primordial black hole, or PBH, is a hypothetical concept that was proposed back in the late 60s and does make a lot of sense from various theories of physics we have today. Specifically, it's essentially these black holes that were created all over the place uh, right after the Big Bang and uh, they were probably there from the beginning of the universe. Now, today we think that many of them have already disappeared because some of them were just not massive enough and eventually evaporated but some of them might actually still be around. Specifically, anything that's over a mass of our own moon will still be around. And some of them, specifically if they're about several masses of Earth, will not just be around, but they'll be around for a very long time, but they won't be really emitting anything. Their mass is just not enough to create very large accretion disks, or actually pretty much any accretion disks, and the only emissions they might have would be from various types of unusual particles, such as, for example, dark matter. So it's a hypothetical concept, but it's a concept based on physics that um, is kind of sound. Now, we've never really seen them, though. And as a matter of fact, uh, the only way we think we can actually see them is if one of these black holes passes in front of a distant star and then causes what's known as a micro-lensing effect. In the study I've discussed a few months ago, the Japanese scientists were able to find one such event, uh, such unusual microlensing effect, in the Andromeda galaxy, suggesting that there's at least one primordial micro black hole in that galaxy. But we've also been detecting these events here in the Milky Way, specifically during this optical gravitational lensing experiment that discovered quite a lot of unusual microlensing effects around the Milky Way. But we always believed that maybe they were just caused by various planets moving around the interstellar space, creating the lensing effects that were observed from our planet. But technically, anything that has mass can produce a gravitational lensing effect. And if it's a certain mass, specifically about 5 to maybe 10 masses of Earth, it will have a very specific gravitational lensing effect that can then be detected from our planet. And so, by using the data from OGLE observations and by combining them with various anomalies from orbits of planets in our solar system, the scientists behind this paper suggested that, well, what if, just, you know, think about it, what if it's not actually a planet? What if what we're seeing here is actually a primordial black hole roughly around 5 to 10 masses of Earth in mass? So that would be basically the size of my fist. 
And this primordial black hole is orbiting out there on the outskirts of our solar system and is causing these effects we're observing, including of course the microlensing effects we've seen and the orbital effects that we've observed in the last few years. Now because it would be very difficult to actually prove if it's a black hole or not, the scientists also suggest um, on how we could possibly find it. And it looks like all of my black holes just collided into one. One of the ways of discovering if there's a black hole out there is to use other theories and other ideas on how we can actually find a black hole that's somewhere in the vicinity. And specifically they're talking about a sort of a halo around the black hole consisting of dark matter that we believe might exist around black holes. But we also believe that dark matter once in a while creates energy. It annihilates itself and creates things like gamma rays and x-rays. I've actually discussed one of the recent studies where scientists very thoroughly analyzed some of the gamma rays coming from galactic shapes and galactic uh, regions and they believe that it might have been the signs of dark matter. You can check it out somewhere above my head. But so here the idea is that around this black hole there will be kind of a halo or essentially a sphere like shape of dark matter particles that can technically annihilate once in a while and produce gamma rays and x-rays that would then be detectable from our planet. So the scientists behind this paper suggest that if we were to start looking for so-called Planet 9 with not just infrared sensors and infrared telescopes, but also by using x-ray and gamma ray telescopes as well, we might have a new discovery on our hands. Specifically, we might actually find the closest black hole to our solar system, the primordial black hole that may have been captured by the sun uh, billions of years ago that is now causing all of these patterns and all of these unusual phenomena that we're detecting in our solar system. And so even though currently we still believe that it's really the planet 9 that's causing all of this, maybe this planet 9 is not a planet at all. Maybe. It's instead a very unusual primordial black hole that will very likely create an entirely new field of studies for us because we'll be able to discover the first ever black hole. And if it's actually a black hole out there, that's basically the beginning of a new era for humanity because we'll be able to study it in a lot of detail and possibly create something absolutely incredible using it. But the chance of this being a black hole and not a planet is actually pretty low right now. Mostly because we definitely need a lot more proof and a lot more definitive emissions from this area to be able to tell that this is a black hole. There needs to be a lot more gamma ray emissions, a lot more x-ray emissions, and a lot more unpredictable, very unusual high energy emissions, specifically when something falls into this black hole, that would suggest that this is not a planet. For now, I think I'm going to still be subscribing to the Planet 9 as a planet idea and not really a black hole. Nevertheless, it's an interesting study, so do check it out in the description below. On that note, thank you for watching, come back tomorrow to learn something else, maybe subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning science, and maybe support this channel on Patreon. It does actually help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.